Welcome to the video on Methods and Assumptions Report by the Missouri Department of Transportation. This information can be found in 905.3.2.5 and 905.3.7.1 of the MoDOT Engineering Policy Guide, EPG. MoDOT has developed a Methods and Assumption Report template that is meant to aid consultants and other parties submitting work to MoDOT in their production of methods and assumptions reports. This module will provide guidance and expectations for preparing a methods and assumptions report by walking through each section of MoDOT's report template. The intent of this module is to inform the TIA Methods and Assumptions Report. The sections in this module shown on your screen correspond with the section numbers of the Methods and Assumptions Report module. It is important for the project manager, modeler, reviewer, and other involved personnel to develop an effective plan for conducting the necessary analysis. All parties also must agree on assumptions to be made to complete the analysis. Therefore, MoDOT may require a methods and assumptions report to be drafted and agreed upon by MoDOT and shared with stakeholders for all traffic impact analyses. A TIA methods and assumptions report serves as a record for the decisions and agreements made by the advisory team at the outset of a project will ensure that expectations are set before any analysis is performed and it sets the stage for effective communication throughout the process. The intent is for this report to be updated as methodologies and assumptions change during the project. This report can then be referenced and appended to later project reports. MoDOT has developed a Methods and Assumptions Report template that is meant to aid consultants and other parties submitting work to MoDOT in their production of Methods and Assumptions Reports. It is important that the report template is not altered before submitting to MoDOT. Do not delete any sections of the template. Instead, if a section does not apply to a given project, write NA and give a brief explanation for why that section does not apply. If additional information is needed, it should be attached to the report as an appendix. The template provides several guidelines in color-coded text to represent information that should either be replaced with project-specific information, section explanations, and content examples. Let's begin with discussing stakeholder acceptance. Section one of the Methods and Assumptions Report template is stakeholder acceptance. This section will document the project stakeholders that were consulted and made aware of the plan of work set forth in the Methods and Assumptions Report for the project. Project stakeholders typically include MoDOT representative, FHWA representative, and county or municipal representative. Stakeholders from other agencies and groups may be added as appropriate. Now that we've discussed stakeholder acceptance, let's introduce the methods and assumptions report. This section is meant to provide background information on the location of the project, factors driving the need for the project, project history and previous studies, a high level schedule with major deliverables identified, and the project team. Now we can define the study area. Section three of the methods and assumptions report template is definition of the study area. This section should be used to define the study area of the project. 
This might include a list of interchanges, intersections, and or corridors, which will be considered, as well as one or more supporting figures. The study area should be determined based on the logical geographic termini, the project purpose and need, and the expected limits of potential impacts. It is especially important to ensure that the analysis study area is extensive enough in its geographic reach to reasonably estimate transportation and land development impacts. The project study area may differ depending on the type of study. For example, the traffic operations study area may extend beyond the safety analysis study area or vice versa. Once you've determined the project study area, it's time to determine the analysis years or periods. Section four of the methods and assumption report template is analysis years or periods. This section should be used to define the time of day analysis and analysis years. Sometimes this step is best completed with traffic forecasting to determine appropriate horizon years based on forecasting assumptions and constraints. This may differ for the traffic analysis and the safety analysis. Typically, only AADT forecasts are needed for planning level studies. Project level operational analysis will typically include AM and PM peak period forecasts. Sometimes a midday peak is also needed depending on the characteristics of the study area. Safety studies may perform time of day analysis at specific locations, such as schools, which see disproportionate volumes during peak hours. Determine if a peak period of one hour is sufficient or if a longer period is needed to capture the buildup and dissipation of congestion. The appropriate years to analyze for a project vary based on how the project will be used. The diagram on your screen provides typical analysis years studied. All of the analysis years listed, existing base year, interim or opening year, and horizon or design year should be included in the project analysis, unless otherwise justified and discussed with the appropriate MoDOT representatives. For all projects, it is important that the existing base year be included due to its importance for model calibration to existing year traffic conditions. The existing base year is typically as close as possible to the current year. The interim or opening year is the expected future year that the project will open to traffic in the case of phase projects. This might be a sequence of intermediate analysis years. The horizon or design year is a future analysis year that is at least 20 years into the future after the opening year of the project. A 20 year horizon year after the opening year of the project at minimum is typically used to forecast future travel demand on the network. The planning horizon could be shorter for design projects. Horizon years for safety projects use the life cycle of the longest countermeasure for the horizon year. Consider setting a maximum safety horizon year of 20 years after the opening year of the project and documenting special circumstances if setting a horizon year longer than 20 years out is necessary. There are some instances where the focus is on identifying the improvements necessary to mitigate existing impacts. For example, a large development that is responsible for mitigating only their specific impacts to the transportation system. In these instances, a future year may not be necessary. Study needs should fit the context of the project. Now let's discuss design alternatives. Section five of the methods and assumptions report template is design alternatives. This section should be used to list and describe all known design alternatives the study is considering. This step will require collaboration with stakeholders. 
Sometimes this step is best completed with traffic forecasting. Section six, to determine appropriate alternatives based on future travel demand. The design alternatives may not be known during the initial scoping of the project, but will be determined during the study. It is important that at least one no-build scenario, especially an existing year scenario, be included because of its importance for model calibration. At least one build scenario, where project is soon completed, should typically be provided to compare and contrast the no-build. There could be some exceptions, such as if there was a new rail grade separation near an intersection that triggered an analysis but does not change volume diversions and could be analyzed using joint, no build, or build scenarios. Descriptions of the future alternatives, including the no build, should include any other planning projects, such as STIP or LRTP projects that will be incorporated into the alternatives. Now that we've discussed design alternatives, we can begin to understand traffic forecasting. Section six of the Methods and Assumptions Report template is Traffic Forecast. A traffic forecast should be completed to understand current and future travel demand on study area facilities. Traffic forecasts involves determining the appropriate forecast scenarios and assessing the characteristics that are influencing travel demand. Section six of the methods and assumptions report should be used to summarize traffic forecasting procedures and should specify either what regional model will be used or how an appropriate forecasting model will be developed. This section should also contain a list of scenarios for which model runs are planned. If traffic forecasts or the forecasting process are used to compare alternatives, this section should be used to list the measures of effectiveness, MOEs, agreed upon by the project support team and should justify the reasoning which was used in selecting those MOEs. These MOEs focus on quantifying the achievement of traffic forecasting or traffic demand objectives. Traffic operations and safety MOEs are discussed in section 7.2 of the Methods and Assumptions Report. Traffic forecasting MOEs could include, but are not limited to, daily traffic volumes, peak hour traffic volumes, vehicle hours traveled, and vehicle miles traveled. Section seven of the Methods and Assumptions Report template is Traffic Operations and Safety Analysis. This section should document the appropriate traffic operations analysis software programs and software version for use in the study. These decisions should be made in coordination with MoDOT and other project stakeholders. This section should also be used to establish minimum levels of service or specific mobility and or safety targets for the project. These minimums or targets may be defined individually for each interchange, intersection or corridor, or they could be defined generally for all locations within the study area. If the target is simply to improve over future no-build conditions, that can be documented here. Shown on your screen is an example of a table that might be used in this section to communicate several mobility and safety targets that are specific to individual intersections in a study area. The traffic operations and safety analysis section should also be used to communicate what measures of effectiveness, MOEs, with focus on quantifying the achievement of traffic operations and safety objectives will be used and what data will be needed to be gathered before software analysis can begin. 
for general background information, definitions, and the typical usage of MOEs, refer to the FHWA Traffic Analysis Toolbox Volume 6, Definition, Interpretation, and Calculation of Traffic Analysis Tools, MOEs. This section should also establish how these parameters will be collected. For example, field observations, existing databases and reports, photos, and videos. Using a table like the one shown is an efficient way to communicate this information. MOEs that will be used for calibration should be considered in addition to MOEs that will be used to compare alternatives. These MOEs will likely overlap, but may not be exactly the same. The Traffic Operations and Safety Analysis section should also be used to communicate what measures of effectiveness will be used during the calibration of the model, if applicable. It is important to note that the selection of these calibration targets will be influenced by the traffic analysis tool selected for the project. Article 905.3.5.3.2.3 of the MoDOT EPG contains more information regarding calibration and setting targets. A table like the one shown on your screen may be a good way to summarize the calibration targets. Note, this is just an example table. The Traffic Operations and Safety Analysis section should also be used to communicate the traffic analysis software programs that will be used to carry out the study. For example, Highway Capacity Software, HCS, VISM, Synchro, Sim Traffic, and Sidra. You should also provide the version and or build number of the software program to be used in the analysis. For example, VISM 10.3, build 122. This section may also be used to justify the given software selection or in the case of multiple programs being selected, to explain what task each software program will be used to complete. Similar to the previous section used to communicate selection of traffic analysis software programs, this section should be used to communicate selection of safety analysis software programs and the reasoning for the selection. Safety analysis software may include Highway Safety Manual, HSM Spreadsheets, ISAT-E, and IHSDM. The version and or release date of the software program to be used in the safety analysis should be documented in this section. Section 8 of the Methods and Assumptions Report Template is Conclusion. This section should document a brief summary of the study's intent and methodology. The last section of the Methods and Assumptions Report Template, Section 9, is Record of Revision. As mentioned at the beginning of this module, the intent is for the Methods and Assumptions Report to be updated as methodologies and assumptions change during the project. Therefore, this section should document the revision number, date of revision, and the content that has been revised. Now, let's discuss key takeaways and additional resources. We just gave you a lot of information. Let's review the key takeaways. Key takeaways for this module include the purpose of the TIA methods and assumptions report, and make sure to become familiar with the TIA Methods and Assumptions Report template. Resources that provide additional general guidance include EPG 905.3.2.5 
of the MoDOT EPG and the TIA Methods and Assumptions Report Template available at EPG 905.3.7.1. Time to see what you know. Question one. Key project stakeholders typically include A, FHWA representative, B, MoDOT representative, C, county or municipal representative, or D, all of the above. The correct answer is D, all of the above. Stakeholders are covered in Section 1 of this module. These stakeholders should be consulted and made aware of the plan of work set forth in the Methods and Assumptions Report for the project. Question 2. True or false? The Methods and Assumptions Report can be updated as methodologies and assumptions change during the project. The correct answer is A, true. The methods and assumptions report should be updated to reflect any changes during the project. Question three, a blank horizon year after the opening year of the project at minimum is typically used to forecast future travel demand on the network. Is it A, 10 year, B, 20 year or C, 30 year? The correct answer is B, 20 year. Thank you for participating in the TIA Guidance Methods and Assumptions Report Module. MoDOT encourages you to view the other TIA Guidance Learning Modules. If you have any questions, please reach out to MoDOT Central Office Highway Safety and Traffic.